In this video, I'm gonna talk about the major contributors to a potassium deficiency. All right, let's talk about, I went through all the different things potassium does, talked about potassium and blood sugar, insulin, thyroid health, blood pressure, the RDAs, all that stuff. We wanna get potassium mostly from food. Let's talk about what causes potassium deficiency because that's what most people are struggling with or even just like suboptimal potassium levels um, and things, you know, if not having adequate levels that are going to be functional and supportive of our health overall. There are quite a few pretty specific ones. Um, I think, you know, it's not an all inclusive list, but this is what I look at if someone is struggling with low potassium. So number one, excessive vitamin D supplementation. That can cause potassium wasting. Same thing with magnesium. Um, I talked about that in the magnesium episode because if we get magnesium wasting, magnesium helps keep potassium inside the cells, then you can get potassium wasting as well. Um, lack of zinc is a big one because that will reduce the absorption of potassium. This is often caused by magnesium, which I'm like, I don't want to confuse anyone, but minerals all work together, right? They all work together. They're synergistic. Magnesium is really important for zinc, which is also important for potassium. If we have a deficiency in magnesium, then that can lead to a deficiency in zinc, which can lead to a deficiency in potassium. Um, a lot of times this deficiency of magnesium or zinc or both is linked to heavy metals because heavy metals certain ones like mercury and aluminum especially, those will bind and replace um, and use up more magnesium and zinc. So heavy metals increase our the burden on the body and how many minerals that we need. And then that can lead deficiencies in other minerals as well. Excess copper is also a big one that can cause potassium loss. So if you have too much copper that's not bioavailable, so that means it's not bound into a protein called ceruloplasmin. I talk about this in my copper deep dive episode, which is really common. Like if I think what causes excess copper, it's like usually high estrogen, hormonal birth control, copper IED, um, and just inflammation and stress in the body in general. Because when we have that inflammation and stress, it leads to other nutrient deficiencies. And then that means that copper does and get bound up to that cereal plasma like it's supposed to. So excess copper can cause potassium loss. Stress is a huge one, obviously. I mean, st stress is hard and sometimes it can feel like frustrating because it's like, well, what does that even mean? It's not just mental, emotional. I, I would say like all physiological stressors as well lead to imbalances in our minerals and anything that's going to lead to a stress hormone release. And sometimes we don't even feel those things like a low blood sugar, you might not even really notice, and then you're releasing stress hormones. Alcohol is another big one, um, mainly because of how it impacts other minerals. So alcohol can actually cause like excess iron, and then that can cause low copper, but it can make copper become unbound. And then that excess copper, remember, can cause potassium loss. Um, insulin resistance also, obviously, we just talked about that. That's going to lower the absorption of potassium. Mercury and other toxic metals, fluoride, they can all block potassium channels. Um, so not only do they bind to other minerals, they can block potassium channels. Thymine deficiency is a big one. And I'll talk about that one in, a, in the next section when I talk about mineral interactions, even though it's a vitamin. Um, and then prednisone or inhalers. So I, I have seen this a lot in clients that are using inhalers. I mean, it doesn't mean we're going to stop using inhalers, right? But I was like, that's so interesting because like taking prednisone for too long, like a steroid can lead to insulin resistance. So you'd never, you're always, your doctor is always going to want to like taper you off a high dose or like minimize how how much you're taking or how long you're taking it because it can cause insulin resistance. And I'm like, is it because it depletes potassium? Probably. Uh, but I thought that was interesting. And then calcium loss. So if you have really high calcium on a hair test, that can lead to losing those solvent minerals like sodium and potassium. And then finally, magnesium deficiency. So if we have a magnesium deficiency, it can actually lead to more potassium being excreted from the body in the urine. And there's studies that I link that show this. Um, but, it, you know, magnesium is a tricky one because if you also have low sodium and low potassium, you don't want to increase magnesium too quickly because it's going to lead to 
a harder time raising your sodium because I talked about this last week. Magnesium is really important, but it does increase, aldo- it decreases aldosterone and aldosterone is the mineral that leads to more sodium retention. Um, so if we increase magnesium and we have less sodium retention, yes, it'll help potassium, but it'll make it very difficult to raise sodium. And honestly, I typically see on hair mineral testing that it it's hard to raise either sodium or potassium um, if we're supplementing with too much magnesium too quickly. So yes, we need magnesium to absorb and keep potassium inside the cell, but it is very nuanced when it comes to sodium levels as well because of how magnesium lowers aldosterone, which lowers sodium retention. So we need magnesium, but we need to be careful with it depending on other mineral levels. And the last big uh, interaction that we're going to go through is vitamin B1 or thiamine, which is not a mineral, but I wanted to cover it because it's one I get questions about a lot. Um, There are animal studies. I could not find any human studies, but um, I have, this is something it's like when you go through hair mineral testing and you're learning about the whole process, it is mentioned because there's vitamin and mineral interactions as well. It's mentioned for potassium. Um, and there are animal studies that show thymine deficiency can cause potassium wasting. So in its intracellular, so you see intracellular potassium being excreted into the urine and then you eventually get low levels of intracellular potassium. So not just blood levels. A lot of the studies we're looking at are hypokalemia, like low levels of potassium in the blood, but thiamine can actually lead to low levels of potassium inside our cells. Um, And it does this because of how thiamine deficiency increases sodium retention. Um, So if you have low thiamine, low B1, you get more sodium retention, which means more potassium loss. And animal studies have shown that giving an IV dose of thiamine helps to restore electrolyte balance between sodium and potassium um, and potassium being intracellularly. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, I don't I don't necessarily use a lot of thiamine in practice. It really depends on like that person's health history. If someone has a history of like abusing alcohol or having like an increase. I mean, I think a lot of people go through seasons of their life where they increase alcohol, maybe drink it more often um, or have like any other health, you know, digestion's big if they have like poor stomach acid levels. Sometimes I will utilize B vitamins that are not necessarily like from a food source. They're more like synthetic. Um, But I haven't necessarily seen that like improve potassium on a hair test. And some of the reason for that could be that B vitamins increase our metabolism. And if we do not have the energy to back that up because our minerals are low, we've, or we're in that like end stage of stress and our body like doesn't have the resources, then I don't necessarily think it would up your intracellular potassium. I think it's good to know. And I think it could be something to consider for certain people. Um, but you know, I don't, I, I wouldn't say that that's like a clinical pearl that I think works for everyone. Mm-hmm. 